So, if China's so great, why is everyone trying to flee? <laughs> All right, guys. Now, I get a lot of hate. That's not what this is about. If you have a good conversation with a Chinese person, they're very proud of China, very proud of their nationality and their nation. You can see it if you look at anything to do with China. It's always a big hoo-ha about like how great the country is, 5,000 years of history, everything about China is on the up and up. Chinese people are becoming rich, you know, and Chinese people have a lot of pride. It's built into them from a very young age. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But something bugs me a lot, and that is, if China is so fantastic and so great, and number one, why are so many people trying to leave when they get the chance? Why is it that as soon as someone gets a little bit of money, a little bit of influence, the first thing they do is send their children overseas and start buying property overseas and then try to get themselves overseas? What's the deal with that? Well, it's pretty obvious. So before I even begin this whole thing, we have to ask ourselves the question. Why did the president of China, Xi Jinping, send his daughter to study in Harvard? Obviously under a pseudonym, but you know, why is it that the president, shouldn't he be a little bit more concerned about the image of his country and send his daughter to Tsinghua or something like that? It shows you just how ingrained this whole idea of going to the West is better in Chinese culture. Now I'm going to try my best to explain this. First of all, as soon as somebody in China gets money, what do they do? They spend money on foreign brands. They buy fancy foreign cars. They buy fancy LV bags. They spend a lot of money on luxury items. They chase after a Western lifestyle, fancy restaurants, Western style restaurants, fancy clothes and cars, like I said, going out to nightclubs, foreigner style nightclubs. This is something that's just part of the culture and I presume, at least I presume it comes about because of the influence of Hollywood and TV shows and things like that. So they see the foreign lifestyle as glamorous. But also, something you notice is, as soon as Chinese people get money, they send their children to study overseas. Of course, I think by now, if you know anything about China, you know how important education is to Chinese families. It's probably one of the most important things, and it's so important that it actually really ends up spoiling a lot of childhoods because the parents force the children to study, study, study. There's so much competition to become top of the class. It's insane. On top of that, they have to take extra lessons, piano, ballet, whatever, different kinds of classes, but Chinese children are forced into a lot of education. So foreign education is seen as superior for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you study overseas, you will be able to come back to China and find a better job. It's always been this way. Of course, it's changing. People are starting to respect Chinese institutions a lot more these days than they did in the past but there's still that psyche in the zeitgeist. It's kind of like, hey, if you want your child to have the best education possible, send them to Harvard, send them to Oxford, send them overseas, UK, Australia, doesn't matter. It's going to be better. Now, there is another big reason why as soon as Chinese people get a lot of money, they end up going overseas, and that is property. You know, as an investment, historically and now in China, Buying property is the best investment. It's seen as security for your family in the future, and it's seen as probably the best, most reliable form of investment. And the problem with investing in property in China is that, number one, you only get a 70-year lease. So when you buy a property, which, by the way, you can't buy land, you can buy an apartment or a villa or something. If you're super rich, you get a villa, but most people, because Little apartments in the cities cost millions of dollars, not RMB, dollars, to buy just a, a small little apartment in a big apartment block, right? That's not yours. You can't hand it down to your children. It's something that after 70 years, you have to renew your lease and nobody really knows where that's going. So there's a lot of insecurity when it comes to investing in property in China. And that's why you'll find that all the top leaders and all the rich people and anyone who's in the government, even though they hide it by getting their cousins and their uncles and their wives and their kids to buy it, but they all own property overseas, be it in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, America, any country that allows people to buy property, uh, foreigners to buy property, you will have a large portion of the property being bought up by Chinese people. So why do Chinese people want to flee China as soon as they have money? 
It's not out of a lack of love for their country. It's out of a lack of stability and a lack of financial options, investment options. Because in China, for instance, the stock market crashed when everybody thought that it couldn't. It's also a situation where anything can change like that. You've got an investment going, a peer-to-peer -peer lending thing that crashed a while ago. Everybody thinks it's okay. The government steps in and decides to change a rule and suddenly everyone loses all their money. You see, there is no control in China over your investments. If the government does decide that they don't want people to invest in a certain thing anymore, they can step in and stop it. And there is no legal way for these people to have any say in what's going on. However, in the Western developed world, there is a say. If the government decides that, oh, foreigners are not allowed to invest in this anymore, you can take them to court, you can fight it, you can appeal, you can do all these things. And unfortunately, those options at present are not in the Chinese system. One thing I'd like to point out is people that come from Hong Kong and Taiwan, which, okay, some people will say those are parts of China. Some people will say they're absolutely not. I'm not here to tell you which one is which. But of course, they are, for all intents and purposes, different countries. And that's because they've got a different law system, got a different attitude, different culture as well in so many ways. They don't ever say Hong Kong is number one, Hong Kong is the best. They don't ever say Taiwan is number one, Taiwan is the best. Taiwan number one! They say, yeah, I mean, we like our country, we love our country, we think it's awesome but they're not going to go out and try to pretend that they're better than everyone else. And it's kind of strange because you notice that people from Hong Kong and from Taiwan don't actually end up fleeing as much as mainland Chinese people do. Of course, back in 1997 when Hong Kong was handed back to mainland China, a lot of people fled from Hong Kong into Canada and places like that. That did happen. But what I'm saying is it's more about the attitude. It seems the more proud and more outspoken about how awesome they think their country is, the more they're willing to flee when they get the chance. It's kind of a bit odd, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, I hope you found this interesting. I know it's a bit of a touchy subject, but uh, I think we can all agree that the proof is in the pudding. And if China was so fantastic and great, why is it that you'll find Chinese people on every single corner of the globe, in every single city and town, doesn't matter where? You know, it's, a, it's kind of a bit of a logic there that I think escapes a lot of people. So anyway, until next time, I hope you found this interesting. And as always, you know the drill. Stay awesome. That didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs>
，我可以直播吗？呃，不可以。不可以啊，<笑>还这么专业。And by the way, every single Friday, check out another Serpents Today video, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Wednesday. Check out Lao86, him and his family, and all the other things he gets up to. And of course, ADV China, most importantly, every single Monday.